Hello, welcome to another creature tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how we're going to take this dragon character over here and we're going to export this dragon, create a bump an, or normal map out of this dragon and an ambient occlusion map, and then bring this dragon into Unity with normal map and ambient occlusion effects. Okay, so before we begin, I'd like to say that you should grab the dragon sample from the creature documentation page. Okay, so just go to the documentation page, click on samples and videos, and look for dragon sample, and that's where you get the dragon. All right. Okay, so we go back to this project over here. The first thing we're going to do is click on export, game engines, save as, and then depending on which version you have, you know, I'll pick regular export for everybody here. Okay, and then pick a folder and it'll dump the files into that folder. Once we have exported the Dragon information, you're going to notice that it's going to export two files. One of them is the texture file of the Dragon, the texture atlas, and the other file is the JSON file of the Dragon. Now, we're going to do something different here. So instead of actually using the JSON data, we're going to use a new functionality, a new feature of the, the Unity Creature plugin, which is the ability to read in binary flat data. This is an exciting new feature that allows you to read in and load your creature character files much faster. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is to go to the Creature Tools GitHub page to grab the repository and it has utilities under which it's called flat data. Okay, so, so this utility is going to allow you to convert your JSON file into a binary flat data format. Okay, so once you've grabbed those uh, those binary those, those uh, th that the repository, what you do is, uh, let me show you, so in your repo you're going to have uh, under the folder, you go under flat data and then go to bin. You're going to see two folders, one for Mac, one for Windows, depending on which platform you're on. So let's say I'm on a Mac right now. So there's a creature flat data binary that you can run. So the way you run it is you run this line over here. You say creature flat data and then you give it an input file, which is my dragon's JSON, the exported JSON. Okay. And then I give it an output binary file. In this case, it's, I call it with an extension dot bytes because all binary files have to be called bytes in unity okay so you do this and you run it and it generates a binary file okay so now we have the binary file and with the the next thing we're going to do is going to load up sprite bump and generate the normal map so welcome to sprite bump the first thing i'm going to do is create a new project so click on create project let's make a new folder let's call it dragon norm and then we're going to pick the dragon, the exported dragon image that was exported from Creature. Okay, so that's that's the folder, that's the image atlas. Let's click open. All right, and then create the project. Okay, so first off, uh, Sprite Bump is actually going to give you a default normal map, which which looks okay, right? But we want to make it better. So one of the, one of the really cool features of Sprite Bump is this thing called Smart Surface, and what it does is it actually tries to create a depth or 3D surface by trying to approximate or estimate the lighting conditions in your 2D image. It's a, it's a pretty cool, neat feature that allows you to create much higher quality normal maps. So just check the Smart Surface option, set it to active, and click Generate. OK, let's see what we get. Oh, look at that. So now the, the bumps and, and, and the extrusions on the dragon are a lot more realistic. That's pretty cool. Okay, so there's a whole ton of other options in Sprite Bump. I encourage you to go check out the other tutorials. They teach you how to paint heights, or cut. You can paint custom texture brushes, and you can blur stuff. You can also the, there's a new functionality, a new update coming in very soon that allows you to paint custom specularity maps. So you can actually affect shininess on different portions of the mesh. Okay, all right. So, but we're gonna do something really simple today. We're just gonna do get a default normal map from Sprite Bump, which already looks really good. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a, an ambient occlusion map. So the ambient occlusion map basically allows you to create really nice, soft, self-shadowing effects on the dragon. So how do you do it? Just go to the view ambient map mode and click generate, and it should generate automatically an ambient occlusion map for you. Okay. If you don't like how it looks, you can smooth it out a bit by increasing the, increasing the smoothing. Okay. And okay. So this is looks looks decent enough for us and we're done so we can save all right now 
what we do is when you go into the Dragon Norm project folder, you're going to see a bunch of files that's saved out. There's the ambient occlusion map, the normal map, and the default decal texture. Okay, so now I'm going to go see you in Unity, and we're going to put everything together. Welcome to Unity, and this is where we are going to put the dragon together, and we're going to see it animate on screen in Unity using the Creature Unity plugins. Now, before we begin, the first thing you need to do is to go to the Creature Unity GitHub page to grab the Unity runtimes, okay, right over here. You're going to see a bunch of really cool demos, there's a Kraken demo and whatnot. Now, the things to pay attention to, once you've downloaded the Unity GitHub plugin, you want to drag these two folders, the, the distro and the editor. Drag these two folders, okay, distro and editor, into your assets folder in Unity. So you should see distro and editor, and then you should restart Unity, okay? So once you've done that, you should see under game object, under the game object menu item, you, sh you should see a creature menu item, which is going to allow us to basically add in our creature character using a plugin. This is the, the plugin sub menu. Okay? Alright, now we're done with that. Let's add in the actual assets we have. So remember how we exported the we exported the creature assets, right? So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to drag in the bytes, the binary flat data thing we generated using creature flat data. That's the dragon's binary binary uh, character representation. So let's drag it into Unity, okay? And then the next the next thing we're going to do is we're going to drag in the dragon's default atlas texture. Let's drag that one in, okay? Okay. So and then remember we exported the dragon normal map. So let's drag in his normal map. All right, and then let's drag in the ambient map. Okay, so we have all the required required resources now. We have the original bytes data file. That's the dragon's actual animation data. We have the dragon's atlas. We have the dragon's normal map. Okay, and we're gonna change the normal map to normal map, the texture to normal map. Okay, and we're gonna uncheck create from grayscale. These are the two things we need to set to make the normal map load correctly. So set the texture type to normal map and uncheck create from grayscale. Okay, and then we have the ambient occlusion map. Okay, so and apply. All right, so we are done with those guys. And what we're gonna do now is go into game object, creature, and we're gonna create creature assets. And then do it again, game object, creature, and then creature renderer. Very simple. Now, click on creature assets. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna drag the the dragon.bytes binary and then drag it over to flat creature data. Okay. Let go of that. There's going to be an error saying input creature JSON file not set, which is perfectly fine because we're no longer using a JSON format. So what you do is check the use flat data asset box, check it, okay? And it'll load the binary data. Right? That's pretty cool. So now it's loaded the binary data, it gives you all the information on different animation clips present in this character. Okay? So that's great, it loaded correctly. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to select the renderer, okay? And we're going to drag the asset and we're going to drop it into the creature asset. Okay? So that gives us the dragon. Great. And then I probably want to check counterclockwise. Oh, there you go. Now the dragon shows up because it depends on where you're looking at in the dragon, right? Because these polygons, the mesh could be back facing. So if you check counterclockwise, it basically flips flips it to make it visible on camera. So depending on wh where your camera is, you might want to play around with this option. Okay. And I also want to make it loop. Okay. And let's set the animation to walk. Okay. So now we can see the dragon. Sort of we can see the dragon, but there's no texture on it. So the next thing we're going to do is drag in the dragon's atlas texture. Okay. Drag it in as a component. There you go. Cool. And let's open up the shader. Let's use the regular standard shader. Let's change the rendering mode to say maybe fade. Let's see what happens. There you go. So now it shows up. It looks great. If we play it, let's see what we get. We should see the dragon walking on screen already. So there you go. That's our dragon walking on screen. Pretty cool, huh? Okay. So what's missing? Well, we made the really cool normal and ambient occlusion map. So let's let's give that a go. Let's make that work. So go to click on the creature renderer object, okay? And under the standard shader, you're going to see a bunch of options. So there is a normal map option. So why don't we just drag a normal map in? There you go. And wow, look at that. So the dragon now looks kind of glossy because we dragged in a normal map. So it actually has nice specular reflections. 
And the next thing we're going to do is we need also need ambient occlusion for some nice self-shadowing. So we drag the ambient occlusion map and we drop it into occlusion. Oh, there you go. So now there's some nice occlusion effects going on. And if I zoom in, you can see the nice effects. So let's play it. And you should see your dragon walking on screen. There you go, with normal maps and ambient occlusion. And that basically concludes this really simple tutorial. You can see how easy and powerful it is to create normal maps, export your character from Creature, and then drop it into Unity using the new Creature Unity runtimes. We've also used the new flat data format, which allows much faster loading and better performance overall for your Unity game project. So I hope you have fun using the new Creature plugin. Thanks for watching.